Okay, so, hi, I'm Jacob. Uh, no, that's probably good. We, we could see that, so that works. Uh, yes, hi, my name is Jacob Perry. Uh, I am a, I work for a company called Acquia. We actually do none of this, uh, so this is just sort of my spare time. Um, I'm a uh, software architect. We do website stuff, um, like everyone else. Uh, but yes, this is my uh, foray into figuring out how to make my gaming machine um, more useful than something I bring to Penny Arcade Expo once a year, because having a $2,000 paperweight is probably not a great idea. So, uh, first before we get into this, I think um, now that I'm recording and they can hear me, I'm going to ask the question again. Who here has tried virtualization pass-through with uh, GPUs? Awesome. How many people have used KVM to do that? Okay, awesome. All right. So uh, first, um, <laughs> for those who have done this may actually get this joke a little bit. Uh, so this is a fairly advanced thing. Uh, I don't want to hear anyone talking about putting their computer illiterate grandparents um, putting their gaming machine on a VM. Uh, this is, you need to know a few things first before doing this. Um, like you need to know how to compile stuff, navigating the Linux kernel. Um, knowing how to set up your uh, hardware so that your uh, IOMMU groups work right, um, knowing bash terminal stuff, um, figuring out you know, basic Linux stuff. So if you don't know any of that and you're not interested in that, this, this conversation will be a little bit um, difficult. So if anyone needs, if anyone's like, oop, this is wrong. Okay, good. So, warning. So who is this for? Um, yeah. So, sorry, you made, oh, wow, that's, yes. That, that is a, well, you'll see a theme in this, this whole talk, so. Uh, so who is this for? Uh, so, so this is the first type of people. How many people ha here have a room something like this in their house? Used to. <laughs> <laughs> there's a few hands for those who are on the internets and can't see this. Uh, uh, so there's two things here. One, the people with all these servers and the kilowatt just going up and up and up, right? I had five machines at my house. Uh, the other thing this is useful for, I was gonna make it more nerdy and then I decided to switch out half my slides for Game of Thrones memes. Um, so the other side is for people who want to do gaming, multiple gaming. So how many people here have done, um, have multiple gaming machines in their house for like kids and other people? Yeah, so what if you just put it in one machine instead of two? You only have to haul one big thing to a LAN party, right? Um, how many people thought about really not wanting to have a computer that looked like this. Um, the original, is Devin here? No, slacker. Um, so, so my friend Devin and I, this, this whole thing when, when I didn't know about PCI Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you picked it up. So the first thing we saw was I have a file server and I have a gaming machine and I couldn't bring both of them to Penny Arcade Expo because you're only allowed two power outlets. They didn't at first tell you how much amps you could pull from it. So I'm like, well, you know, yeah. Uh, so let's put two motherboards inside one computer and let's like build a huge file server and have a gaming machine. It's sort of like having two machines sort of in one, but it's still not a good idea, right? So instead, I want to do something that looks more like, ah, which is actually this, uh, which is actually a fractal um, R5 our Refine R5 design case, which is the smallest case I can find that can fit 10 hard drives. <laughs> Actually, I think it'd do 12, but we'll get into that in a second. So, uh, so first, um, for those who've done this before, um, hardware, Sorry, if you're like, ooh, let me go home and try it on my laptop, which actually, if you get a System76 laptop, you might have some success, depending on what it is. Um, but basically, you need to make sure you have your motherboard and CPU. Funny story, if you have an overclocked K-series, uh, I believe Haswell or Skylake, Intel decided you, no, denied. You're not allowed to actually use virtualization. They've disabled all the virtualization on the overclocked version. So if you decide to be a cheapskate and decided to buy the non-K version, good job, you can do this. Which I was, so that was fun. Uh, your video card, you need to be Uf EFI, which means anything in the last, I don't know, three years. Um, so this is a GTX 970 that I have. Anything in the 900 series would be good, 10, 11, whenever it comes out. Um, should be fine. NVIDIA, 
You could probably use AMD. I haven't, and most of the other people who talk about it haven't. Um, you probably could, but drivers on Linux, um, while those aren't necessarily needed for this, um, just the pass-through stuff is a little more complicated. Um, and then you also need to have not only one video card, but you need to have one keyboard and mouse and monitor per host. So for those who are looking here, which is, I'll get into that in a second. Um, this only has one video card in it right now, so it's one gaming machine. But had I not had my massive hard drive array, I could actually put three video cards in here, which is sort of insane. Did you consider using loopback? Oh, for the video cards? Yeah. Um, you mean for like the host? Um, I, well, it has an onboard video card, so that's why I didn't, but. So you weren't planning on doing remote? No. Um, so the idea was basically Windows boot um, with the NVIDIA card and then use the onboard video from the Xeon for um, the host machine. Um, the other thing you could do is, depending on how much you use Linux, this machine specifically, I don't use it as a workstation. I use it primarily as a server. We'll get into that in a second, though. Uh, I also list at the bottom here IOMMU supporting hardware, which, hey, there's the slacker. Um, hey, Devin. Uh, <laughs> This whole idea was his and mine originally, well, yeah, after some drinks. Um, so, yeah, so you can look at that Wikipedia article. Um, that's, that's a little outdated. Um, there is some newer stuff. Um, Gigabyte is the motherboard I would suggest. And I'll go back to my requirements later. Um, so this is my, my list. Um, basically, the Gigabyte X170, which for those who know the Intel chipset, that's the C236 chipset. And that is the new Xeon V5 uh, version. Um, you'll see that I have a Xeon, and we'll talk about that in a second why. Uh, it is not necessary for the pass-through part, but it is necessary for what I wanted to do. Uh, 32 gigs of RAM, just regular old ECC RAM. Uh, GTX 970, um, a nice power supply to run all the, the stuff, um, and a quiet fan, and then this R5 case. So the reason why those are important was because I had a 3U uh, ZFS server, and it made a lot of noise, and it had this whole RAID array, if you can see here. Um, it, uh, it's uh, four terabytes times eight, so it's like, I don't know, 30 terabytes or something. Um, so I had that. I had a Windows 10 gaming machine. I wanted it to be as small as possible, which unfortunately, this is as small as possible. Um, <laughs> And then um, I had other VMs on another server uh, that I migrated from two other pieces of hardware, and I wanted them all on one machine because none of them are um, what you'd call, like, they didn't need to be, well, it's in my house, so it's already not, pr it's not production, right? But the biggest reason why you see the Xeon here is because ZFS. Um, what I have here for my uh, setup, we have Fedora 25 for the host and file server running ZFS. Uh, Open for OpenSUSE um, is running my streaming server, so I do uh, shoutcast streaming with that. Uh, Windows 10 is the gaming VM, and I have a legacy web server. And you'll notice here that these other VMs don't really need any like video card or anything special. It's just you know they're just running on their own. <coughs> so the biggest thing that I needed to pass through is Windows 10. And so the first thing you do is you install Fedora, and it does its thing. Um, and then what we have to do is we have to start getting in and figuring out how to disable, um, actually, before we get into that, um, any questions about the setup part? Why, why I'd want to do this? Any other examples people can think of of things that they're wanting to do? I have a couple of curiosity questions. Yeah. Um, why did you want to use open SUSE and Fedora over other distros? So Fedora seems, so Red, I should say Red Hat, um, is the one that's been uh, spearheading a lot of the kernel development on this. And so Fedora, specifically Fedora starting in Fedora 23, had the most support. And so my mileage was best on that. Um, I'm actually personally an OpenSUSE person, um, or I used to be. Uh, like my streaming server is running that, um, and it's legacy um, CentOS from like four years ago. I was running that, and I didn't want to work on upgrading it. Um, so those are the reasons why those OSs were <coughs> Uh, but you could pick and choose whatever you want to run in your VMs. Uh, the only exception is Fedora, which I would highly suggest for this piece uh, because it does have the, like, you have the best RPM package support. Um, you have the best chances of compiled drivers. Uh, you probably aren't going to have to build your own RPMs. 
it all sort of works. Any other questions about the initial setup or use cases? Yeah. Did you use some of the DFS uh, stuff to manage your DMs that you don't right now later? Yes, I'll talk about that in a little bit. Yeah. Why do you, is it really just the packs thing? You want all in one box? You want to have your file server to pack? So that's why. Yes, it is. And <laughs> Devin's smiling something. back there. Actually, I don't want, Devin wants it because I have it at my house, but he lives in Seattle and I live in Vancouver. And okay. He doesn't want to drive to my house. I mean, watch movies on my file server. Faster downloads. Faster download speed, yeah, less latency. Yeah, yeah. this is all because of that. Uh, so, uh, but no, actually the, the more legitimate reason was the file server was on a Supermicro AMD Opteron from 2009. It was fast, it did its job, ZFS worked great, um, but the thing was super loud. Like you'd hear like all day in like a little room, like, yeah. Yeah, I'd have to shut it down if we have guests over. Like, it's like, you know, they're not going to sleep in that room. So, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so, anyway, all right. So, we'll get into the. The file server and the web server are secondary to the whole thing. The what? The file server and the web server are secondary to the whole thing. The file server is not. The web server is. The web server is like, whatever. Well, in this use case, like, do we care about the path through for the file server? No. Well,. Yes and no. I mean, we care about not the pass-through, but we care about being able to host Linux servers on a machine, like the same machine that I can put my pass-through for Windows 10. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. So we'll get into the install. So the first thing is you'll install Fedora. It'll do this, and it'll bring you to whatever, right? The next thing you have to do is disable some kernel drivers. So this is probably one of the most annoying things about um, the pass-through piece is that the Nouveau driver or the NVIDIA driver if you install it, but that's not open source, so you'll get the Nouveau driver. Um, that will ins get installed automatically when Fedora installs it. Um, and then once that boots, you cannot grab it from, uh, you can't grab it from Fedora once it starts. So you have to blacklist it. Um, not only here, but I'll show you another spot where it has to be blacklisted in, in Grub. Um, the other one that I've done is sound is much better when you do it in the system or when you do it um, in Windows. So I don't need sound in uh, Fedora. I don't need sound in any of my other VMs. And so I've passed through all of my sound to Windows. So it gets, I think this has like some sound blaster thingy in my bob or whatever. And passing that through the, the low level devices, you get all the drivers in Windows. And it sounds much better and you have less latency. Uh, so, here's how you get rid of the sound, and your mileage may vary on that. That's an example, but basically, try to find all the sound uh, kernel drivers that get loaded, and basically, by putting that also to disable that from kernel, it works pretty well. Except you can't hear anything Fedora, so whatever. Uh, the next piece is making sure you pass through your uh, BFO PCI. Uh, basically, all of your PCI IDs, which we'll uh, show here on the system in a moment, um, those also need to be added um, to the, the boot up for BFIO. Uh, so you'll see here, just an example, there's a big long list. Um, what you do is you'll do an LS PCI, and then you'll find out the devices that are, or the, the device IDs that you need, and you'll put them all in here, and then uh, load this up, and then when you run KVM, it'll just pass those IDs to, um, to your guest. Questions about those? Okay. Oh, also, when I was looking through here, I also blacklisted it again. So for those who have tried this before, there's a lot of trial and error. More error than trial. Um, so at some point, I added this. Pretty sure you don't need that, because it'll just go through the different spots. But I added it there anyway, because um, it was in my configuration file. So once you do all that, that's at the, the runtime, the user, um, once it starts booting. You also will need to um, add um, the I, Intel IOMMU uh, uh, flag to turn that on to boot in the kernel. Um, and this all comes with Fedora. Uh, you'll also have to, at uh, boot time before the kernel even loads, uh, or before even the um, initRD loads, make sure that the uh, Nouveau video driver is not added at all. And then you also need to make sure that the VFIO uh, driver is added in the pre-boot uh, sequence. Luckily, this is also all being recorded, so you can come watch it later, too. 
So um, we'll get into ZFS real quick. Uh, you could probably do this on a VM, but I probably wouldn't. Um, I'm a little, like ZFS is sort of a, it's awesome, but it's also scary. Um, you know, it sort of feels like that. Uh, if you ran it without ECC RAM, like, like your data is on the other side of that arrow and he's just waiting to like hit it if you, you know, lose power or something. Um, so basically, uh, I'm running ZFS to host my VMs. So um, my web server and my streaming server are both hosted there. We'll get into Windows 10 in a moment. But basically, you could load up any other VM you wanted to. Uh, one of the pieces I've not done yet is load another Windows 10 VM on ZFS so that I could run a second machine. Um, so I'd have one running on um, plain hard, uh, a plain hard drive I have on SSD and then one in ZFS. Uh, but I haven't tried that yet. I don't know if anyone has tried that yet here. Yeah? Real quick question. Did you, are you going to talk about how you set up your, uh, your virtual drive? Or the, are they files? Or did you actually, like you said, put bare hardware through on all of them? Uh, bare hardware. I'll show the bare hardware one. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the images one is a little bit easier to do. Um, yes, so again, if you're going to do ZFS, you're talking Xeon platform. You're not talking i7. No one do. Someone, yeah, he's not in this room. Someone disagreed with me last night about this, that you don't need ECC RAM, but I would highly recommend using ECC RAM. Otherwise, this might happen to you. All right. So uh, let's get into the VM setup. Uh, you know, uh, maybe I'll just show that on the lap or show that on the screen here. Um, basically, we're using QEMU KVM um, with a quad core uh, Xeon. I was tweaking around the different sockets, so you can set you know dual core, dual processor, um, different uh, threading. The most performance optimum one I found in Windows 10 was saying. One socket, two cores, two threads. Um, that seemed to work the best. Uh, use the Haswell no TSX CPU configuration. And then um, I have a network. This thing has two video or two network cards. Um, there's a uh, gigabyte um, or gigabit network card, and then there's another one uh, for one of the other VMs. So I basically have an external uh, network connection and an internal network connection for all of the different uh, VMs to communicate to each other if there's no internet, which we'll see if this actually works because I just plugged the network cable in. I don't know if it's live. Uh, so before you get to booting it up, you should also verify that your host actually supports this stuff. And this is probably the more important um, piece. Before setting up your, uh, your QA EMU, you should make sure that A, you can see your IO MMU groups. Um, that your processor is properly supporting it and that the kernel has loaded it. And then there's this little bash script, which was, um, this is also online, but basically if you copy this one down, it will actually show you the different IO MMU groups that you have. The important part about IO MMU groups is that you can basically hardware segment different pieces of your PCI bus so that you can pass that whole PCI bus to a guest. So if I'm like, I want to pass my video card over. I want the hardware to say down at the low level, pass this whole group over to my uh, to my guest. And so this is how you figure out what groups they are. So when you configure the VM, send this group over. Questions about that? Okay. So um, we sort of talked about this already. Um, Going through the device IDs, once you uh, look at the groups, you can use LSPCI to figure out what their IDs are, which you'll look in the configuration for QEMU, which we'll show here in a moment. Um, one other important part is gaming requires dedicated peripherals. So the keyboard and mouse I have here, I only have one keyboard and mouse, um, which makes it fun because as soon as uh, Windows boots up, it actually grabs it from Fedora. So I no longer have a keyboard or mouse in Fedora. You'll have to remote in. Um, and in this demo, usually Windows actually boots directly up. When I turn this on, it'll just boot up Windows and it'll be like, you didn't even know Fedora was there. Uh, in this demo, I'm booting up Fedora um, first and then we'll start Windows manually. Uh, so we'll talk about mapping block devices and uh, you can also create images. So 
Uh, like any other VM, you can store your images on ZFS and then boot them up, or you can just send the whole SSD over to uh, KVM, which works really nicely when you want to just migrate a drive from a, uh, from a bare bones hardware boot, like uh, you know, dual booting Windows 10, to doing something like this. Okay, so, yeah. Just a quick one. Uh, if, you are, if you have these images on the ZFS, do you have to uh, disable uh, copy and write or just like, do it all by itself? Or? If you use an ECC, it should work just fine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it works pretty good. Um, you, you don't need to disable that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yes, but make sure you're running as you So, Folks who have done this, how many people have tried to actually bring Windows from like a dual boot to a VM? Has anyone tried that before? Has anyone had success with that? I did. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so, this was super exciting. Windows was actually super simple with Windows 10. Um, caveat, I don't use Windows at all anymore, except for gaming. So I'm not a Windows expert at all. So I'm pretty, yeah. If this was a Windows talk, I would have left at the beginning. So. Uh, I had an old Windows 10 that was booted uh, with the pre-beta. So I had the free version, whatever, and it's been going through whatever upgrades over the last two years or whatever that is. Um, which could explain, I have one little bug in Windows we'll talk about in a moment. But essentially what it was, was taking the SSD that Windows was installed on, installing the VFIO drivers so that um, the, the VFIO layer uh, allowed it to boot, and then I just added the block device to it and it just booted. Like, it just worked. I, I, I don't know how to explain it much better than that. But Did it, Windows get mad that, the hard, that some of the hardware changed? No, because your graphics card is the same, your motherboard, a lot of the IDs from your motherboard are the same, and your hard drive's the same, and your memory is the same. So it, it, it doesn't really care. There is one time when I saw it um, get mad about um, activation. Um, but because Windows now, if you make sure you uh, have your Windows account, whatever it is, uh, key logged in, as soon as you re-log in, it'll just move that key and keep you, it, it just worked. Yeah? So when you set up your CPU for the host, were you emulating the board that it came off of, like the same chipset and all that? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, yeah, the, has the, the, when I migrated Windows 10 to this board, that one was a Haswell chipset, um, which your mileage may vary depending on what board you're using now, um, because this is definitely not a Haswell board, but Windows just sees it as that. But you're just typing it through the CPU, so it doesn't... Exactly. Good. Yep. Cool. All right. Yeah, and then the nice thing is, is now that your map devices, they look as native devices, so you're using your native video drivers, native sound drivers, etc. If you, if you ever need to move the SSD on the virtual disk to just keep the same UID and hand over to... Prob yeah. That's what I'm done. Nice. That would be awesome. I should try that. Yeah. That'd be cool. Uh, yeah, Windows is... Uh, hard drives in Windows. Uh. I still have a Windows device at home that I haven't booted for many, many years because it stopped booting one day. and because the hard drive UUID changed and I have no clue how to make it actually boot. So I'm not a Windows expert or user, so yeah. So, um, so let's look at some benchmarks. Um, they're pretty good, I guess. I mean, this doesn't mean a whole lot, but uh, this is the benchmark of this machine running. I don't know if people have used this before. Um, this is Nova Bench. Um, basically, uh, this is this machine. This is it running natively. So 1598 versus 1363. You'll see the big difference here um, is, what was it? The RAM speed is a little bit slower, but not much. Um, the uh, CPU test is a little bit better, uh, but in general, it's pretty, pretty good. Um, for comparison, if you ran without GPU pass through and you just ran it, it's something like the score is like 500 because you're running like an emulated video card. The, well, the GPU test would end up showing zero. So, yeah. So, ways you can improve performance. The other piece uh, that uh, changes your benchmark scores, which benchmark scores are, eh, 
I mean, they're good to figure out a, a comparison between your hardware and your VM. So if you're booting, um, it's always good to take a benchmark of your uh, dual booted system before you VM it. So if, so for here, I'm like, okay, 1600, that's not too bad. Um, whatever that means. I mean, I don't really care about the, the number except what is relative to the VM. Um, but ways that you can improve your performance, basically get the, the VM number up was more RAM because uh, the Windows machine had 32 gigs of RAM and now as a VM it only has like 12 gigs of RAM. Um, making sure you're still on the SSD and surprisingly your sound card actually makes a difference too. So does it work for gaming? Sort of. Sort of like the Falcon, it likes to go fast but it's a little, you know, might fall apart. Uh, <laughs> But no, actually, well, Devin can attest to this. Did my machine lock up once at the LAN party that we did this? Once. Okay, fine. It did lock up once. <laughs> did it lock up twice? No. Thank you. It did not lock up twice. That could just be Windows. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it could just be Windows. Uh, so, so <laughs> this works pretty well, especially if you don't mind running hacky stuff. Um, there is one big downside to my uh, my Windows install, which is uh, if you right click on the desktop or anywhere in Explorer and get a contextual file menu, it will uh, cause a blue screen of death. <laughs> yeah. That could be just Windows. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what it is. Uh, no one else has ever reported this problem. So I, I can only chalk it up to maybe being an upgrade from the beta, running the SSD, and like a whole combination of weird things, and a new install might fix it. Um, but that is like the only reproducible error I've had in Windows. That like, you know, you're going around, everything's great, and then you right click, and you're like, Ugh, use a big swear word. Because when it locks up, you are screwed. You have to actually reboot your whole machine. Because when you try to reboot Windows, it, it just doesn't want to reboot. So you have to actually boot it. You have to shut it down and then reboot it. Did you try to contact, my, contact my Microsoft support? <laughs> the question the question was did I try to contact Microsoft support um, the answer would be no I think they'd laugh at me but, yeah yeah they would help me yeah yeah so, it's like, yeah take this thing down <laughs> this thing blue screens on me yeah just wait till the next guy calls and tells you have viruses Oh, yeah. <laughs> Can you help me with this other deal first? <laughs> so, yes, you had a question. Yeah. Yeah, no, more or less a suggestion. Have you ever thought about setting the Windows box to a full kernel dump and then running WinDB against the dump? You just, I. So. See earlier, I don't know anything yeah, about Windows. So, so <laughs> I want to figure out why that, why that blue screen path means you have I'll, I'll see if I can meet up with you after. That would be awesome. Yeah, I would demo it, but that would be the end of my demo. So, <laughs> <laughs> so maybe, we, maybe we'll show that off. So, <laughs> I've thought about it. No, it's muscle memory. You like after you do it a few times. Well, the one time Devin said, well, one time. Yeah, that was me going. Oh yeah, let's load this game. <laughs> Just get a Mac Yeah. <laughs> so all right. So, uh, so speaking of which, <laughs> all right, let's see if this will work. Uh, let's see, are we still on? Oh, hey, look at that. All right, great. Let's go to full screen. Boom. Did you ever consider doing shared uh, GPU resources? You know, instead of just physically passing through, but like allowing you to share to a couple different VMs? I haven't tried. I don't think KVM supports that. KVM yeah. KVM I don't think it'd be for dicey. No. Okay. So. I know they're coming up with virtual GPU, but I don't think it's like a single person. Oh, all right. Yeah, I don't know. I I like the pass. The pass through thing has worked pretty well. So you'll see here, these two are running automatically. Windows 10 usually runs automatically, but I just have it turned off right now. Um, so I can access my. This VM, not like it really matters, like I'm streaming stuff, um, which is actually streaming to the ether right now because there's probably not much of a network connection. Web server, if you can figure out what the IP address is, and then Windows 10. Uh, let's first, before we run this, we'll open it up and take a look. So what we have here, yeah, no, let's see what this is about, I'm starting the camera. 
there. Oof, sort of visible. Um, yeah, maybe turn off the lights. There you go. Yeah, all right, cool. All right, so, um, right. So basically, there's our CPUs, um, which gives us, yeah, so I've actually allocated four of them, um, and that, that's worked pretty well. Um, I gave it 16 gigs. Oh, yeah, 16 gigs now. Um, uh, because my other VMs really don't need anything. Again, this is my gaming machine, basically. Um, we have a virtual I.O. disk, which is basically directly, it's just directly mapped to the device, and this works great. There's nothing else you have to do. Um, so SDB is my uh, SSD, and it works really nice. And then I have, so in this machine, I have eight four terabyte drives. I then have another four terabyte drive that was uh, gaming storage, and I have two SSDs in the back. One is to host uh, Fedora, and the other one is to host uh, Windows. So these two are just basically passed through with uh, virtual I.O. And that's why you need to have the driver in Windows before you do this. Otherwise, life gets a little uh, dicey. Uh, we have our external and internal network cards and yada, yada, yada. It's funny, you can't really get rid of the keyboard and mouse, uh, but these are actually not used. Um, so then here comes the fun part. Um, when you go into, let me go to, that's the wrong keyboard. So if we go over here, well, uh, actually, there we go. All right. So where did it go? So here is, for instance, this is the GTX 970. These are all in the right. Uh, this is all the the group one. That's and the output from your bash script. Yes, this is the output from my bash script. Sorry. Yep. Wow, that is totally not readable. Um, so that's sort of readable. All right, well, yeah, let's see if that will work. Is there a plus? I don't know. How does this work? Zoom in, control plus plus. Ah, there we go. All right, it's a little, but yeah, okay, so you can see here, uh, group one is this one, and this has just the video card and the Skylake PCI Express controller. So you'll see over here that corresponds to the same thing. Uh, this is the NVIDIA controller. Also, you'll notice that the other device is on there, uh, the audio controller. Funny story, I probably could actually pipe my HDMI output through to here, um, but I don't do that, so yeah. Um, let's see, then the other piece is the, uh, where's the sound card? Sound card might be missing. Uh, ah, no, here it is, group nine. Yeah, so then I allocate group nine at the bottom, which is all of the audio bus. And so all of those are added over here as well. And so by adding these as separate groups, you can basically send all of those devices into uh, KVM, and it will see them all together as, as, one, um, as one piece without screwing up your host or your guest. The other piece here, for those who've done stuff before, is that I also pass through my USB devices. So LSUSB, whoops, that's not it, LSUSB. So uh, this can get annoying. Luckily, these IDs have sort of stayed the same. Um, this part is a little more hacky. What would be better is probably a USB hub that you could pass through everything through, because right now I have to actually manually set the IDs for all of these devices, which sort of sucks, uh, because they tend to change. So you need to make sure you plug them into the same port, and yeah, it's it's sort of a pain. Also, if the IDs shouldn't change, because they're hardware IDs, the bus address might change. Yeah, the bus. The bu USB ID should never change. Sorry, the bus, yeah, the bus ID the bus changes. ID oh, okay. Yeah, yes, yes, sorry, it is the bus ID that changes. Gotcha. Yeah, so that's the problem that you run into here. The other problem is, say, you forget your Steam controller, and I boot this up, you get an error that says it can't find the USB device, and it won't boot. Um, so yeah, so these are basically uh, the keyboard, the gaming keys, because that's apparently a different driver, um, and the mouse. And then the rest are the controllers. So that's basically it to run Windows. Any questions about the QAMU KVM setup? 
So just to confirm, uh, yeah. you have to have all of the USB devices that you have forward, they all have to be physically connected for it to boot? Yes. Okay. And every time it has to Yes. Okay. Yes. Refer back to the Millennium Falcon piece. <laughs> yes. So the question was, do I have to have all the USB drivers uh, or all the USB devices in order for it to boot? And the answer is yes. Um, yeah. So it is, it is uh, still a work in progress. Um, Correct. It's not Windows. It's KVM that that. There should be a device. Yeah. Probably that one's big. I can't find it. Yeah, and it doesn't it doesn't gracefully do that. You could automate it, right? What? You could automate it. Just look for a grab for the device yes. IDs and, and then edit the virtual. Yeah. So, so there is a um, there's also so there's this nice graphical one for people who like that. There's also a um, uh, there's also a, a NCurses version. There's also a shell which you can send automation, like you can automate with a bash script. You could actually yeah, grep it and then pipe it into the uh, configuration file and then restart um, uh, KVM. So that, that definitely could be something you could do. Okay, so let's boot Windows. So for those who are seeing, I'll know Windows starts when my mouse disappears. Mm -hmm. And then I switch my monitor over to DVI, which that is the that is the uh, the firmware that's booting. Um, I realized here that actually Windows is on DVI, not on H or not on uh, HDMI, which means I can't just plug it into this guy. So we'll just have to use the phone. They have an HDMI and DVI converter up there. Oh, do they? They should. They had a little pack. With yeah, he was running around with that. I thought it was HDMI that I needed, and I realized that's actually DVI. I need. Um, that's okay. All right. So there's Windows. Ah. Right. I tried to play Goat Simulator earlier, and <laughs> it, it yeah, it was pretty rough. So yes, here. Uh, so let's go into our. Oh, okay. You can right click here. <laughs> <laughs> you can right click there. Just, just don't right click here, <laughs> or else you're screwed. We'll crash it later. I'm almost certain I'm going to crash it. <laughs> I, I just, I know I'm going to do it. It's just, yeah, yeah. Brace yourselves. Um, all right. So yeah. So here is. Uh, so it actually is showing up as a Red Hat Virtual I/O disk device. I have my NVIDIA GTX 970 in there. Um, it's passing through the Intel bus controller. Uh, what's the other fun stuff? That stuff. You know why it shows up as Red Hat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're the one deciding the drive. It's, yeah. It's, I mean, it's the reason why I'm using Fedora. They, they do. Yeah, but there has to be an organization that you own the driver, so Red Hat is the, the name you have to, to get the driver signed by Microsoft. Which that's awesome. That's pretty cool. Put it under a company name. <laughs> it has to be under Red Hat. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, where's the other piece here? Um, huh, let's find a good moment. Oh, I was trying to find sound cards. That's right. There it is. So there's the sound blaster passed right through. So all the fun 3D whatever you can just read in the stupid marketing material for the motherboard how cool their sound card is. Um, let's close that. Let's open up. Where is it? There it is. Uh, let's do. I think of one. So, um, ooh, we can do Rocket League. No, I don't know how many people have seen Rocket League over there. So, let's do. We can watch chess. Oh, we can do Just Cause too. Oh, actually, I may not be able to let's see how this goes. So yeah, so it runs. Um, it'll run these uh, basically full full on. Um, we didn't really see. I wasn't the GIMP person of the group, right, Devin? Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it it worked out pretty good. Um, let's go in here. Uh, load list, I'll say. I don't know where this was. Uh, so this right click also boot screen in 
No, thank goodness not. Uh, yeah. Nope, it does not do that. Now, if I remember how to play this game, yeah, so it's pretty fast. I can go get myself shot here when I go to the guy that's, yeah, I know, I need to get inside the base, whatever. Um, I'm assuming it's smoother on your screen. Oh, sorry, I guess on here it looks like shh. Crap. <laughs> it looks great. Everyone gather around the monitor. Oh, boy. There we go. All right. Now I feel like we're playing like, yeah. So I may have jumped into the water. I don't know where I'm going here. But, uh, yeah. So I feel like we're playing a game with that. Uh, yeah. So. Left? 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 Am I going to jump in the water? <laughs> okay, so yes, there, there it is. Uh, and these settings, I can go back here. Uh, if we go back um, to settings, display settings, uh, where is it? Uh, no, go back. Where was it? Resolution settings? Advanced display settings? Yeah. Okay. So I could actually probably turn most of these on. How well does it run something like Crisis 3? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Let's see what this does. Oh, that's what it thinks I should do. All right. Well, let's give that a shot. So this is, this is very high settings. Um, can I actually resume from really high settings? It did not like that. <laughs> it did not like that. Oh, there it goes. There it is. Full settings. All right, so this is at high, full resolution. Uh, running around, I don't know where. Da, 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 da. Yeah, this is at full, like, taxing the 970. So, yeah, you can run basically any modern game through this. And that's, that is, that is... Basically, GPU pass through in in a yeah. Cool. Questions about that? So yeah, I've got a couple. Yeah. If you don't mind, um, what's your networking setup for the the host and uh, the guest? How how is that working? For right. You? So let's go in. Let me. Show, I'll show you that. Um, actually, before we answer that question, any questions about Windows? Anyone wanted before I shut down Windows? I don't know how to do that. We'll do that after the presentation. We'll do that after the presentation. I bet you it's because of the context the right click brings up all the devices. Right. I'm thinking, because when you're in game, the right click is captured by the game. And yeah. When you're in Windows, the OS tries to access a bunch of stuff that might not actually be available. Be available? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so you'll see here network drivers, because I'm not going to right click there. I think I can right click here and go to network connections. So here I have, um, so I have two network devices. Uh, one is, yeah, so this one is the uh, bridge, which we'll talk about here in a minute, I'll show you in Linux. And then the other one is an internal, is the internal network. So I can actually go into uh, my host, and then, uh, and there we go. Um, let me see if I can make that bigger. Oh, can we, yeah. Uh, can we turn the lights back off? There we go. All right, sorry. Sorry. I don't know how to actually make Putty bigger. Again, sorry, I'm not a Windows user. I'm just a Windows gamer. Um, well, that was close enough. Uh, so if I go to, what is it? Um, Yeah, so here we go. So I have a whole bunch of virtual networks, and I have one uh, bridge, BR0. So BR0 is the, um, that is the bridge that brings in um, the network over the one uh, gigabit connection and puts it on all of the other devices. So, so you're, you're actually using the network. You're not using the, uh, what is it, lib, IO, or? No. Okay. No, I'm not passing through a physical network device. Well, that, that's, I'm, the yeah. reason I ask that is because you might, if you really want to have this one set of keyboard and mouse, what I did to get around this problem was you could look into Synergy. Synergy, yes. Yeah. 
works. A little, a little honky, but. So I should have mentioned Synergy. I did try Synergy. The problem is it did not work very well. Um, I believe the biggest problem I ran into was in game, right click or middle click didn't work right. Like there's a few quirks that it was too, um, it, it, would, it wouldn't pick up the key bindings really well in games. Which and one did you have it the most? Uh, I've tried both. Okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Fedora as host definitely didn't work. And then trying Windows as host, it's sort of, but not really. You could navigate Windows, but you couldn't do anything else. So yeah, Synergy would be really cool if you could make, if that could work. But I haven't had a whole lot of luck making it work. Um, and, and because, like I said, um, typically, when I turn this on, it will bring me into Windows. Fedora, for me, I just need a shell. So I, I, I tried to do Synergy, and I was like, well, I don't really need it. So yeah, in fact, that's, so that's basically what I use here is um, I use most of the shell to access um, anything on the host. Um, any other questions? Yeah? Why do you have the separate local network? So partially for internet, like, um, so if the internet is buggy or flaky, um, that can become annoying. The other issue is like I have my uh, host set up, so I, I always can go to one address to access my host or access my other um, internal VMs, whereas with DHCP, I have no clue where they're at. So it's specifically, it's specifically um, netted or not on, on your internal network? The internal network uh, is running, uh, there's a DHCP server on the internal network, and then they just have their own IP addresses. And then on the bridge, um, every single device has an IP address on the main network. So if someone could figure out whatever this Windows IP address is, you should be able to access it from any of these computers. And then probably figure out a way to cause a blue screen. Um, <laughs> yeah, blue screen. Yeah. Um, all right. Any, any other questions? Yeah. Have you seen the Linus tech videos where he's yes. made multiple? Yes. So I have a little uh, comment about that. I believe he is also using the Unraid uh, yeah. distro, which is like, makes me feel dirty. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not really open source. And well, it's not open source, but it uses a lot of open source technology. Um, so which is sort of uncool to me. Um, but yeah, that's, it's, it's basically the same stuff underneath the, yeah, underneath the veneer. Yeah? Have you tried uh, using on on uh, uh, Linux or oh, on on the window you're using the, the Windows the machine to stream to another machine. Technically, I could. I've not yeah. tried to do that, but yeah, I I suppose what I could do is install Steam on Fedora, turn my thing back over, <laughs> and then run Stream Steaming through the video card through Windows, but on Linux. Yeah. I yeah, that should work actually. If I had network, I would actually. Try would you have audio? No. You're right. I would not have audio. Yes, you would. Oh, I would? Steam streaming yeah. can do audio. Yeah. I've, I've done the audio. AWS thing where I stream it. Yeah. But, but, the but, the but the host doesn't have audio. Well, that's what my little like, USB DAC is for. That's true. So yes, if I wanted, US, if I wanted sound on here, I would put like a USB DAC on. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It would be fun. Or a Sound Blaster 16 that I can dig up for you. That's true. Actually, I have a little puck. It used to be on my backpack. Yeah. That, that I used to use. Um, yeah. And the next thing I want to do is actually put another video card in here to do two of these. Um, and then the other cool, I haven't tried the ZFS, but in theory, you could do ZFS snapshots of your Windows things. That's my invention. Yeah. yeah. That's what I was going to add. You haven't, you haven't tried that yet? I've not tried, because it's running on the SSD hardware. So what I'd have to do is convert that into an image and then, um, and then do, do that. that. Make sure that you turn copy on write off on that file. Right. <laughs> so yes, no copy on right if you're going to do snapshot. Yeah. Oh, one yeah, little slow, Should yeah. slow down the crawl. Right? Yeah. Was fresh install? Because I plan on doing a fresh install of Windows inside. Is it going to not boot until there are the Red Hat 
TV drivers or what? There's a um, there's a way the Windows install you can sideload drive. And yes. The so TV yep. So I have a USB of it. Yeah, you, have you don't even have to have that. There's so an ISO things. of the VFIO drivers, and okay. you just add that as another disk on um, oh, yeah. on there, and it'll it'll just see the sideload driver. Yep. So, okay. There's another trick you can do if you load uh, with a regular virtual disk, not with the VFIO. Yeah. You add a dummy VFIO disk as a secondary. Oh. You install on a regular disk, and Windows will see that you have that VFIO disk and allow you to install the drivers. That's how I did it. Shut down and switch it over. That's cool. Correct, right, but mine will be on a, a ZFS uh, IO partition, so it won't be present. Right, right. So Instead of unformatted volume. Yeah. Right. So. Uh, okay, well, so any other, that's basically how you set up. Uh, now, granted, it took me about, people have asked how long it takes. Um, two nights, so about, you know, eight to ten hours to, to make it actually work. So not too long. Uh, your mileage may vary depending on the hardware you have. That um, post all the debugging, right? How long did it take to figure it all out? <laughs> well, yeah, so I was, I was actually really surprised at, um, so there's, there's a bunch of um, how-tos that are dated, unfortunately. Um, although now that Fedora 25 has been out for a little bit, um, there's some newer ones that are coming out. Uh, part of the hope is that this presentation can be part of the, um, you know, the material out there to talk about how to do VFIO um, and, and passing through uh, PCI slots um, on Fedora 25. So hopefully this is helpful for that. Um, but going through most of those, people have done the hours or days of, of debugging to make sure those the, the little things are, are working right. Yeah. But uh, with the new kernels and the virtual hardware uh, thing, you could possibly just share it like you share your IOs, right? Yeah. And instead of doing PCI full pass through, you could just use the PCI virtual devices and then you can share the, the card with your host too. Yes, that would be correct, but it wouldn't be, probably wouldn't work as well. No, that depends what you do on your host. Yeah, yes, it depends what you're doing on your host. Yep. Yeah. So you said earlier you need a new GPU, another additional GPU for each additional CPU. Correct. Okay. Yes. So on here, the uh, Xeon 1245 uh, V5 has an embedded uh, GPU in it. Uh, it's important on the uh, Xeon platform, a lot of them do not have GPUs. So you need to make sure you get one that does have a GPU. Uh, this Gigabyte board actually has, uh, what is it, DisplayPort and HDMI out. So um, that allows that to work. So, so yeah. you can just install like a 1080 Ti and then bring up like 10 seats of like ROM one. Yeah, basically, yep. Yeah. You mentioned your graphics card needs to support EFI. Yes. What? Why? Do you do that? Why? You so the, the IOMMU, um, the, the, the segmentation of that stuff is done in uh, EFI. Yeah. It's done at the motherboard. Yeah. Cool. So does someone want to see me blue screen a Windows box? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So, all right, how do I do this? Okay, so don't worry about that. Go ahead and crash it. I'll, I'll meet up here. After. All right, all right, all right. Ready? Let me, hold on. Let me actually. You know it's going to work now, right? Yeah. Oh, no, it ain't going to work. I will tell you that. It will definitely not work. Three, two, one. Oh, it doesn't even let me show the, oh, there it is. Wait. You kidding me? What? All right, well. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. All right, hold on, hold on. I, I do not believe that. I do believe that. All right, hold on. Let's right click on one of these. Oh, yes, there we go. Hey. All right, so. Oh, I've tried to scan that stupid little thing. It is a very not useful error. Something is wrong somewhere. Yeah, K mode exception not handled. No, sh yeah. 
It's, yeah, it's a kernel panic. So yeah, and once it boots down, um, you actually have to shut everything down because when you reboot it, Windows just sort of twirls forever. So yeah, so that's the one thing you ought to watch out for. But anyway, thank you everyone for coming. Hope this is useful.